Father, Father, Father. Hallelujah, Jesus. What can we say? What can we say? You're the one that wrote the story. You're the one that in eternity past, you chose us before the foundation of the world. Thank you, Lord. You're the one, Lord God, that called us to be daughters of the Most High God. Thank you for a love that condescended even when man in the beginning chose to sin against you. You, Lord God, came to die for us, to give us a new life that would be found in you and you alone. Thank you, Jesus, for loving us with a love that would not let us go, an eternal love. And we're looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing one day or for you to soon return. But until then, as you continue to work in us to will and to do of your good pleasure. But until then, as you, Lord God, because you know the plans that you have for us and their plans of good and not of evil, because your expected end is for us to know you and to make you known. Yeah. So we thank you, Father God, for who you are, for all that you're doing. And as we enter into your presence with sweet fellowship right now, we ask that our hearts might be encouraged as to what you say, and then may we be encouraged one to another. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus, for who you are. In your name, I ask these things. Amen. 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 Okay, um, you can unmute. And what we're going to do, if, if you would get your workbook, and uh, turn to, you know, <clears throat> we, in between sessions, there, um, you know, are questions to do and just to um, kind of, you know, uh, remind us of what we just studied. So if you would take your workbook and we're just going to reflect on our last study and we just praise the Lord for this study, the power of knowing God by Dr. Tony Evans, and I don't know about you, but it has truly been a tremendous blessing in my life. Uh, this is, you know, just going through it over and uh, again to reflect on the truths from God's word as to why we were created and what he is doing, you know, in our lives as he's left us here for, your, for his glory. Thinking about the last session, the whole benefits of abiding um, in fellowship with the Lord. If you look on page 58, we just want to look at um, just a couple of reflections. Then we're going to have another selection. Then we're going to see the video and move right into our time of, of fellowship and lessons for today. Because God desires, question number one on page 58, <clears throat> God desires for you to know him in many ways in order to bear much fruit. So how do we know that? Because Jesus tells us, he says in John 15, 16, you did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you would go and bear fruit and that your fruit would remain so that whatever you ask of the father in my name, he may give to you. Yes. So you have been chosen, chosen <laughs> to be productive. List three things that you, in which you are bearing fruit. You are being productive for God and you are advancing his kingdom. So what I would just like, um, maybe uh, we have what, 18 women, five women. And I just want you to share one thing. You don't have to elaborate, but I just want you to share one thing um, in which you are bearing fruit. What are you doing? Just, you know, you can, um, you know, how, however, just turn off, your, you know, re, uh, unmute your mic and then just share one thing in which you are allowing the spirit of the Lord to use you now to bear fruit for um, his kingdom. Come on, sisters. What are you doing? Just, just give me one thing that you're doing. Uh, for me, Cheryl, uh, teaching vacation Bible school. Great. Uh, okay. Has been, was, was a challenge and an encouragement. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Praise God. Come on, somebody else. Okay. <clears throat> Praying for children and ministering to children. Okay. Wonderful. Amen. Amen. Okay. Somebody else. But the, the classes. 
I'm sorry, Cynthia? Buds to blossoms. Oh, okay. Praise yes. God. Praise God. Teresa? Daughters of the King. Just, yeah. Praise God. Anybody else? I'm teaching children, primary church. Amen. Amen. And so, you know, those are, are um, outward witnesses that you are being intentional and being about your father's business. And so therefore you are seeing the fruit. And, and that's what I had said earlier as we were just chit-chatting, uh, chitter-chattering, that it was so good to see children being children now with all that's going on. So yeah. whatever we can do to impart to them, you know, just loving on them and, and just being God's mouthpiece, um, that's a blessing. So maybe a couple more people, um, anyone else? Um, that I would, say, I would say raising my granddaughter and um, <clears throat> is definitely um, a challenge. And Amen. Amen. But you're bearing fruit. You're seeing, you're seeing the fruit of your faithfulness as a grandmother, you know, taking on this responsibility. Okay. One more person. I'm still writing devotionals on the side. Oh, okay. Okay, great. Encourage the body as the Lord leads me. Amen. 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 Okay. And giving. Sister Cheryl, giving. Yes. Giving. giving. Yes. Giving. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Okay. Because the kingdom of God can't be advanced. Mm -hmm. And God doesn't need our money. He just needs yes. our hearts. Yes. And so the, the heart that wants to give furthers, you know, his word. So look at page 59. Um, we're just going to reflect on number three. Um, which is Colossians 1, 9 and 10 that says, since the day we heard of it, we have not ceased to pray for you <laughs> excuse me, and to ask that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will and all spiritual wisdom and understanding so that you will walk in a manner worthy of the Lord to please him in all respects, bearing fruit in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. And so just thinking about what God is doing in us as we know him to do through us, look at this cycle, which is just an excellent cycle. Remember the cycle that the Israelites went through in, in the book of Judges, you know, they would be doing right and then they would start mm -hmm. sinning and then God would bring judgment and chastening. Then they would cry out to the Lord and then he would, you know, forgive them and restore them. They had a cycle. Um, but it was a cycle, you know, that was frustrating. That was, you know, not what the Lord would have wanted. But when we think of where we are as we're growing in Christ, I love this cycle that shows um, to take a moment to meditate on the cycle that goes from knowing God to bearing fruit to knowing God. And I love that where it starts with knowledge of God's will. As we study his word and know what his will is, then we begin to walk in a manner worthy of the Lord that allows us to please him. And when we please him, we just find that the overflow of pleasing him is we begin to bear fruit. And as we bear fruit, we increase in knowing him. Mm -hmm. And so God is in the process. I love, you know, like I said, I do utmost with my man Toza. And I love even the devotional this morning, uh, which he said, you know, that many times we um, think that God is always teaching us something, but it's not always that God is building character. Mm. Amen. Hallelujah. Like him. So it, teaching something is one thing because you don't have to always learn from what you've been taught. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. when what has been uh, allowed in our lives is now making us like him. And I said, yeah, Lord, Amen. that's mm -hmm. what we want. Mm -hmm. and so to know God as we understand his purposes and his plans, we now move to our last section in studying this um, study of the power of knowing God where we are now empowered for a purpose. And that's on page 61. We're going to have um, a selection played and then we're going to see the video from Dr. Evans as we move into the study of empowered for a purpose. Amen.
We chant in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread you said you would supply all my need according to your riches I have but to ask and I shall receive to go from this place and share this love you give to me to show someone who's lost and help them find their way the way to choose As we look at what it means to be empowered for a purpose, um, before we just look at the video, the central focus, why do so many people struggle, page 62 of your um, workbook, why do so many people struggle with stability, calm and peace, and so frequently face a life of emotional, spiritual, or even physical chaos? The answer is simple. Because God has not been positioned before all things for them. He is not first. Instead, he is in addition to all things. Or perhaps he comes after trying other things. Yet God will only hold the plan of your life together when he is before all things in your life. And so, you know, we're now going to look at the lesson 
on, from pages 62 to page 66. That's how we're going to glean today and just share, you know, one with another in the impact of, of even what Dr. Evans has challenged us with and being empowered for a purpose. When we look at page 62, the main idea is that with God as our foundation, bless the Lord, we become empowered for his purposes and find our place as members of the body of Christ. Yeah. Then God empowers us for his purposes. Mm -hmm. If you will get, well, I tell you what, it's on page 61, really, uh, Colossians chapter one. If someone wants to read that, Colossians chapter one, verses 16 and 17. By him, all things were created, both in the heavens and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities, all things have been created through him and for him. He is before all things and in him, mm. all things hold together. Amen. So God empowers us for his purpose and can use us for his glory in whatever stage of life we find ourselves. And believe me, all of us are at different stages now in our um, lives. Then number three, God as the Trinity exists in community. Since we are made in his image, we need community, mm -hmm. which we find in the body of Christ. Jesus Christ is the basis, wow, for our unity with one another. Mm -hmm. If you would now turn to Ephesians chapter two, and I would like for someone to read verses 15 through 22. Ephesians chapter 2, verses 15 through 22. Whoever gets it first can read it for me. For he himself, I'm going to start at 14, Sister Cheryl. Okay. For, for he himself is our peace, who has made both one and has broken down the middle wall of separation, 15, having abolished in his flesh the enmity, that is the law of the commandments contained in ordinances, so as to create in himself one new man from the two, thus making peace, and that he might reconcile them both to God in one body through the cross, thereby putting to death the enmity. Oh, keep going, right? To 22. Yeah, to 22. Uh -huh. yeah. And he came and preached peace to you who were afar off and to those who were near. For through him, we both have access by one spirit to the father. Now, therefore, you are no longer strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God, having been built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone in whom the whole building being fitted together groans into a, grows into a holy temple in the Lord, 22, in whom you also are being built together for a dwelling place of God in the spirit. Amen. 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 And just to signify that yes th these verses are just referring to there's no more separation mm -hmm. you and gentile we're one in christ and when we do think of the the godhead god the father god the son and god the holy spirit that is complete unity and so god in this life you know as sinners we have to learn but he as our foundation so we have no excuse mm -hmm. for becoming connected in the body first of all because he challenges us he demands you know this is how we're going to grow and to know him we have to be connected in the body that he is conforming to his image each one of us and so when we think of that yeah Jesus Christ is the basis for our unity mm -hmm. so we have no excuse for saying that I can't or I'm, I'm isolated and yes. this is where I should be. No, that, that's not God's will. Mm -hmm. And outside of that, when there is no connection, then of course there's going to be a disconnection in our fellowship with him if there is no connection in our fellowship one with another. Amen. And so when we think of all that God has done and of course giving his life 
so that we can become one. He knew what he was dealing with. Yes. <laughs> From day one, when Adam and Eve sinned, and, and I love, you know, uh, yes, Genesis 3.15, God already knew it. So I'm coming mm -hmm. to make the difference so that man won't have an excuse of what he can't do because he can do it through me. I'm Amen. connected in the Godhead. Therefore, because you are in me, you can be connected in the body, the physical body of believers, because you're already connected to me. And so he is our cornerstone. So yes, he's the basis for our unity. Mm -hmm. So even in this, this state and time when everything is going on with where we find ourselves as believers and, you know, we become comfortable in isolation, we become comfortable in this this new place of Zoom, this new place of not being physically around one another, but that's not spiritually healthy. Yeah. When you, when you have to be, that's one thing. And God has blessed so that even those who have to be can still stay connected mm -hmm. like we are doing now with Zoom and on Bible study and on Sundays. So when there has to be, God has already made available in this season and time a means for the bodies to stay connected. But now that we can come back and we still don't want to out of fear, out of fear being just comfortable now you know i'm you know this is the way i really am and so now mm -hmm. things have been set up so that mm -hmm. i can use this as a real means of uh, justifying that yeah. i don't need the function of the body mm -hmm. yeah and we're going to see as we continue to go through this um the next month we'll do the community this fellowship right now is just more so just having our hearts connected with our purpose with him. Yeah. Because as we are intentionally connected with him, we're gonna see it's gonna flow with the one another. Amen. As more as I'm becoming more intimate with him. Then also it says we are all members of one body, not mm -hmm. two, not three, not four, not a hundred, not the millions and billions that God has made. No, we are one body, and that's the yeah. church that he's made. So turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 12. That will be, like I said, for next month, but we just want to kind of use that um, also as a basis of just kind of establishing mm -hmm. the reason why we want to connect with him because there is a reason and purpose for that. 1 mm -hmm. Corinthians chapter 12. And if someone would read verses 12 through 26. For as the body is one and has many members, but all the members of that one body being many are one body, so also is Christ. For by one spirit, we were all baptized into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, whether slaves or free, and have all been made to drink into one spirit. Mm -hmm. For in fact, the body is not one member, but many. Mm -hmm. If the foot should say, because I am not a hand, I am not of the body. Is it therefore not of the body? And if the ear should say, because I am not an eye, I am not of the body. Is it therefore not of the body? If the whole body were an eye, where would we be? Where would be the hearing? Mm -hmm. If the whole were hearing, where would be the smelling? But, <laughs> but now God has set the members, each one of, the, of them, in the body just as he pleased. Amen. And if they were all one member, where would the body be? <laughs> but now indeed, there are many members, yet one body. And the eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you. Nor again, the head to the feet, I have no need of you. Mm -hmm. No much rather, those members of the body which seem to be weaker are necessary. Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, and those members of the body which we think to be less honorable, <laughs> on these we bestow greater honor. 
Okay. And our unpre unpresentable parts have greater modesty, but our presentable parts have no need. But God composed the body, having given greater honor to that part which lacks it, mm -hmm. that there should be no schisms in the body, but that the members should have the same care for mm -hmm. one another. And excuse me, and if one member suffers, all the members suffer with it. Or if one member is honored, all the members rejoice with it. Amen. 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 I tell you, Sister Cheryl. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Let me tell you, I, I praise God for this verse. Yeah. Because this is something that we have been sharing the month prior about the body of Christ mm -hmm. and the giftedness within the body and how, the, how God has place us each where he pleased. And I thank God for it because it's just confirmation to me that we're in the right, on the right track of, of where we need to be as this particular um, uh, body of Zion. That mm -hmm. We got to remember that we are all placed within Genesis Bible fellowship as it pleased the Lord for his pleasure, each one of us doing the work that he's called us to do. And now we can't all be feet. Minister Carpenter said it on Wednesday. We can't all be foots. <laughs> in the area of giftedness in which we were gifted. And yeah. everyone makes up. Everyone makes up. Oh, hallelujah, Lord. Yes. Hallelujah. I know. I know. And look, even when we think of the physical body, you, you, you let a part start hurting. Mm. Yeah. You go, look, isn't it awesome? Yeah. You can go to bed yeah. one way and praise God, everything yeah. is okay, and then you wake up the next day. <laughs> the world, <laughs> true. Mm. That a part hurts and it affects the whole body. Mm. And Amen. Knows, God knows that the uniqueness of this physical temple that He made, every part has a function, and, and every part is there for a reason. And mm. so we'll do more of the community in the next part of the study, but just to understand me, me, the uniqueness of me, God, how he created me through my mother's womb and mm. to be the unique me looking like I look and having the kind of personality that I have. And some of us are introverts, some of us are extroverts, some of us are just verts, whatever. <laughs> We're just the unique person that we are. Yeah. And Lord knows, I don't mean no harm. By this stage of life, if you ain't content with where God, yeah. where God has made you, then all, yeah. I, all I can say is heaven help you. Because yeah. it's too late <laughs> in this season to still be grasping and appreciating and understanding he made me me and so in order to function outward when him and I you know got that uh, intimacy and that that heartbeat and I'm understanding from his perspective the uniqueness of who I am and why I'm still here yes. not for the what I haven't done what I'm about to do but the right now what I'm doing, that's what we want to know. And so look at page 63, the application. Since we are made in the image of God, we ought to pursue relationships within a local church and to seek to live out God's purpose for our lives as members of his body. Mm -hmm. The first quotable, if you want to know the plan for your life, don't go looking for the plan, look for the plan. Mm -hmm. <laughs> God mm. wants to get to know you. I mm. love this. Not informationally, but relationally and intimately. However, he says that decision is in your hands. You must seek him, mm. pursue him, mm -hmm. run after, spend mm. time with him, mm. communicate with him, and learn based on his word about him. This isn't only about you. It's much bigger than you. It's about God using you to advance something he is doing in history. And just, you know, a, a, a lot lately when I awaken, I may wake up early, I think about my life. 
Mm. I think about my life from the time, you know, I was a child to the time I was married to, to now. And it seems like, I guess I know because the nearness of Christ's return and all that is happening before us, it gives you a, 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 another level of mindset that you don't just think about things you used to, but you think about holistically you, the you, and why God created you, and what did he make you for, and after this life, I'm going to be in eternity, forever, so this is the only place that I work out my salvation, so when you think about your history, the story that he's writing for your life, let's look at the first question. And, you know, again, when you want to interject, um, you know, you can just speak up and, and I will, you know, acknowledge you. Tony mentions that the area the study was filmed in is often known as the cathedral without walls. Sedona is a place of natural wonders, even in evoking worship through its visual stunning landscapes. Why do you think nature can produce worship within us. When you think about the beauty of this season, yes. there's nothing yeah. like fall. Like why do you think nature produces worship within us? The awe. Mm -hmm. the awe of nature. It is just I wrote that, yeah. Denise, mm -hmm. what were you gonna say? I wrote down an answer. I said, we realize that the only that the creative, only the creative mind and hand of Almighty God could create such splendor. He himself is enshrouded in Shekinah glory. Mm -hmm. You know, we yeah. think of his creative hand as like his, you know, awesome paintbrush. Yeah. Just mm -hmm. that's loose, you oh. know, on on everything that he has created. And it yeah. just you just have to stand in awe and say, Woo. Oh Lord, what a savior, yes, what a yes. God. Yes, yes. There's mm -hmm. only one designer. Mm -hmm. Look at yes. it. Mm -hmm. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. Yes. Another thing that nature provides for us or for me is that you can see the season of life. You can see spring as a new birth and growing up. And you can see the flowers blooming through mm -hmm. the summertime. And most of them are very beautiful during that time because they're the height of their peak. And then you can see the fall where we're going slowly down. And then you see that dormant season of our life. And to me, that is so gorgeous because in each season of nature, God provides everything, mm -hmm. even for the birds and everybody to nurture, to mm -hmm. produce, and the worms, and how they feed together. Mm -hmm. as they, yeah. They just feed together and they, 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 they produce something wonderful and they lay the foundation for the next season. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so to me, nature yes. encompasses the whole glory of God and yes. how he has yes. produced us. Yeah. Yes. 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 And you think of even the scripture that they have here, Psalm 19, 1, the heavens That's are right. telling mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Of the glory of God and their yes. expanse mm -hmm. is declaring the work of his hands. Yes. Yes. Oh my gosh. Mm -hmm. How and awesome. Sister, it's Sister his, Cheryl, it's this is Juliana. Uh -huh. um, I was going to say that where I'm from, we don't have these dramatic changes in the scenes Ooh. around us. Everything stays yeah. green. However, you do have different things that happen. You have different types of fruits and vegetables that are only... Um, they're only fruitful in a particular time of the year okay so you know and and then you may have some parts of the year that it's really rainy in this particular season mm -hmm. and it's drier in this or it's a little slightly cooler when i say slightly cooler i mean in 70 degrees but <laughs> you know it's, <laughs> it's still it's right, still, yeah. you know the changes are not as dramatically seen but you can still see that crisp greenness Mm. you know in in different trees and all the trees stay green year round but they don't all bear fruit at the same time okay yeah so some parts of the planet they don't get all the seasons right 
Yeah. Uh, right. Yeah. Right. You think yeah. of Alaska. I mean, you got to you got to really want to live in Alaska. Really? I remember when Darling used to tell us how dark it was for long periods. Yes. You know, and, yes. and you think of what the sunshine does. I tell you, it's nothing like waking up. Oh my gosh, and the sun is bright. And that's why, you know, when we when when we do our walkings, I want to walk out in the sun mm -hmm. to get the vitamin D. Yes. But when it's, it's cloudy or when it's dark, and now that it's getting darker earlier, I know that's all like. Mm -hmm. it, it does make a difference mm -hmm. in sometimes how you feel. So mm -hmm. I can't imagine living mm -hmm. in Alaska, but you get used to it. Yeah, they had this act, this condition called SAD, seasonal affective disorder. That's one reason I would never want to live in Alaska. Daylight only in sunshine for the most part, six months of the year. Yeah. It's not called yeah. the land of the midnight sun for nothing. Yeah. And yeah. there are people that get depressed and they yes. routinely, yes. as you mentioned, yeah. they need that exposure. They have special heat lamps for people okay. who get artificial, albeit, but it's still exposure to vitamin D. We need yeah. it built like that by God, designed yeah. like that. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Amen. Sister, Sister Rose, you got your hand raised. Did you want to say something? I did too. Uh, yeah, yeah, yes. Oh. Um, no, Sister Rosa. Oh, Sister Rosa. Okay. Uh -huh. I don't. Okay. I guess she doesn't tell. <laughs> what were you going to say, Dr. That's Rose? not me. Oh. Oh, okay. That's, okay. That okay. Was that was cool. Yeah. That's okay. What I want to say is from, um, you know, the little signs that I know. It's so amazing that I always think who would, who, would, who would think to make this happen this way? Mm -hmm. And it's only God. The precision of science in how the body functions, how nature mm -hmm. functions. <clears throat> so there's no way, there is absolutely no way that the universe or we would be here if it weren't for the magnificence and the power and mm -hmm. the awesomeness mm -hmm. of the creator. I mean, you know, mm -hmm. it's mind boggling yeah. because little yes. things can go off and yes. throw us off, yes. you know, and yes. they, are, yes. they are loss, they are loss of, uh, of creation. If we didn't have the laws like gravity to ground the earth mm -hmm. in a certain way, yes. the angle, the axis, how far the sun is, how far the earth is away from the sun. Yeah. If mm -hmm. that shifts, if the right. yep. yes. of yep. that we would burn up. I mean, it makes yeah. absolutely no sense. So the mm -hmm. question, who, who made it this way? Yeah. You know, and it can't be chance. Mm -hmm. No, because if you if you were chance, the minute, the minute it went away, you know, uh, if everything will burn up, but mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. and um, only God thinks to have made it this way for mm -hmm. from eternity, from when yes. He said, "Let yes. there be light," and it transverse from yeah. before, and it, it's going on and on and on, and science keeps finding out more things that they didn't know before. Amen. <laughs> that's why. Look, that's why God says the fool. That's right. Yeah. Oh, oh, Amen. There's no God. In Romans, it talks about, you know, the um because of God's nature, what they see with their mm. eyes, mm -hmm. like, it removes any ignorance or excuse for man to want to be ignorant. That's because right. the heavens mm. declare his glory. That's right. So, so that's why even the man or the individual that does not want to accept Christ, they won't have an excuse mm -hmm. because their eyes have seen a, a handiwork mm -hmm. that it has mm -hmm. to be somebody greater than them. Mm -hmm. Yes. Oh, yeah. Amen. Yeah. Greater, greater, and greater, greater. Yes. Greater. Yes. yes. And Amen. so really even the second that part is. of oh. that question oh. that talks about telling uh, uh, God's nature, telling of the glory of God, you've kind of already acknowledged that. Sister Cheryl. Yes. Sister Deborah had her hand yes, up. Sister Deborah. Yeah. Well, praise the Lord, everybody. I just want to say, um, in front of my house, I have a huge tree. And up on the top branch of the tree is a wasp as big as a basketball. Ooh. And I can see the wasps coming in and out, in and out, 
I guess, protecting the queen or doing their work. And I look at that and I see, well, you know what? That's nature and that's the glory of God yeah. mm -hmm. that we have to be in and we have to out, we have to keep going in and out to fulfill the will of the Lord. And, you know, my children say, well, mom, you need to get rid of that thing. I said, no, that's nature. That God has set it up there for a reason. And maybe the reason is for me because it doesn't bother me. Right, right. You ain't gonna bother me. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm not gonna but when the weather gets, when the weather changes and you can see the weather changing and it gets cold, they're gone. And that's yeah. when I can get rid of it. So All they can right. go and do it some, and build okay. somewhere else. Okay. And not up in my church. Yeah. Somewhere else. Yeah. 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 The, the blessing and the will of the Lord and nature See, yeah. they have a purpose. Everything has a purpose. Yeah. You can see that. And you know, what is our purpose? You know, yeah. we leave the house every day, go out. I see the wives, they're doing their job. Yeah. Yeah. And they not even get paid. Well, they get paid for it because the Lord is taking care of them. Yeah. That's a yeah. <laughs> so, so look, I was talking to Zena last night and, and uh, Sydney. Uh, there was a, a bug on the top of her ceiling and she was screaming. So Zena goes in there and Zena said, Boy, I'm going to have to ask the Lord, why did you make, I think it was, I don't know what kind of bug it was, with mm -hmm. wings. Why did you make them with wings that they got to fly? What is their intent? But when you think of it, even like he was talking about the fire ants, oh my gosh, they yep. said we haven't even seen, that our eyes haven't even experienced. Exactly. Yes. He made them for his yeah. glory. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. yes. And we get the privilege for those who go in the ocean, for those, you know, who have um, the ability to see things through microscopes, when you mm. think of even antibodies and bacteria, mm. oh my goodness. Mm. So when we yeah. you think of all, all the things that are good and bad, some, of course, comes because of sin, but other things because he's God and he yeah. just wants to make it. Exactly. Put it look, I want you to share a time. Share a time when you were led to worship God due to your interaction with or your view of nature. Anybody mm -hmm. just want to share briefly when you uh -huh. were God's nature and it blew you away? Yeah, well, every year um, since we've been living in this house, hummingbirds come every year and it brings me so much joy. Mm -hmm. And it's the same ones that come. Mm -hmm. <laughs> to the point that I just named them. And it's like, when I, you know, when they come, I'm just excited because I'm Barry told me, show me a recipe online. I can make their food. So I have like three feeders around and, you know, mm. they are so fascinating. And oh. it's like that food is not in that feeder. They come and they fly right in front of you and they're just observing. They're just <laughs> looking. Mm. And it's just, it's, it's remarkable to me. And yeah. I'm just like, look at God, look at God. They, they, God. You know, it's like, I get joy out of it. And I'm just like in awe of the father because I'm just like, look at God's creation. Yes, like, mm -hmm. Those little birds. And then when <laughs> it gets cold outside, yeah. like the season has changed and I get so sad when they're gone. But I was like, you mm -hmm. know, if you look up, you know, the history of, of, of those mm -hmm. birds, they fly down south. And I said, they fly at such rapid speed. I was just like, oh my gosh. Oh, this is the root. <laughs> I said, look at God. Amen. Amen. <laughs> God. Okay. Uh, around 9 11. When 9-11 first happened, we took a trip up to um, uh, Canada and we went the back way through New through Pennsylvania. Yeah. Like, oh, the Sega sister. Yeah. Yeah. And it was it was October. And when you drive those back roads, it looks like you're going yeah. through the hills. Exactly. Yeah. You're going up the hill. Going through the hill. You <laughs> see those trees in orange, burgundy. Mm -hmm. Mm. Yes. Gold. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. The Lord mm. thanked him for his beauty and the depth mm. of each tree and how that looked like the body of Christ. Everyone <laughs> standing up, praising the Lord, different shapes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm. 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 That's right. Oh, beautiful. Mm. So, yeah. so oh, I you, you're going in and out. I'm sorry. <laughs> when I was driving up to uh, upstate New York, Around yeah. 9 when 9-11 first happened, mm. seeing the trees going up the back roads of Pennsylvania, I think it was Route 15, Route 81, something like yes. that, Sister Cheryl. Like if we're going to Otisega, it's the same mm -hmm. thing. To see those trees in their splendor of their colors and full bloom in October. 
And yes. Let me just yeah. worship the Lord. Girl was driving. I wasn't driving. Yeah. <laughs> my hands and praise. Yeah. And I take as many pictures, but they couldn't capture what my eyes were Exactly. Mm-hmm. exactly. Mm-hmm. So reminiscent mm-hmm. of what God, mm-hmm. God is and who the body of Christ is. Mm-hmm. Different shapes, different sizes. Mm-hmm. Yes, different colors, all palms facing up, praising mm-hmm. the Lord. Mm-hmm. That's what they were. Mm-hmm. That's, That's nothing right. but the glory and the That's splendor it. of our Lord and That's Savior. Mm-hmm. Amen. Amen. Mm-hmm. Amen. Sister Shara, <laughs> mine is um, mine is um, the beach. You know, yeah. um, like you know, when you're just sitting there on the sand, you know, you're just looking at the waves and see how beautiful the water is, and yeah. you know, and just seeing the um. All kinds of like sometimes you see like little fish like swimming all around, you know, and then the waves like when they start to come, it's so rough, it's just like you clap your hands, you know, just mm-hmm. to see all of that that God mm-hmm. created is so awesome. And only God can do something like that, and it's so amazing just to sit there on the sand and just relax and just look out at the clear blue water, you know. So that Amen. is the only good how God, how good God is, you know. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Amen. I and had look. the pleasure of seeing okay. um, a couple of weeks ago, James came and got me about four o'clock in the morning. And as I looked up my uh, living room window, there were two fawns oh. sitting on our front lawn. <laughs> we live in the heart of the city. <laughs> and to <laughs> see them just laid out and one just got up and strutted to the end and 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 then sat back down but it's like god look at this look at this glory that you have created exactly. please protect them please don't let yeah, nobody know. hit them know. you know yeah. but it was so beautiful to see god in nature up close yes what i was asking sure what did she see i didn't hear that uh, two fawns, two deer, female deer. Oh yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Mm. yeah. <laughs> my back. I see them in my back sometimes. They're beautiful. Yeah. Sister Cheryl, one of the things yeah. that I saw the first time I it really came uh, home to me is um, when when I, um, a bunch of us kids when we were growing up, we left home. I mean, it was everybody got up really early in the morning before the sun rose. And we walked a few miles to the beach. It was, you know, a group of us, cousins, siblings, friends. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And we got to the beach in time for the sun to rise. So Mm -hmm. everybody, and we did that a lot of times. So we would sit on the beach and we would just wait for the sun to rise. And you just see this ball of orange just slowly rising. And everybody would just... Yes. spontaneously break out into applause mm-hmm. <laughs> because it was, yes. you know so I mean if, if you have the privilege to see that sunrise and mm-hmm. you, especially mm-hmm. before before the noise starts before any mm-hmm. activity starts you're just sitting and you're you're looking to the east it just flies. looking for mm-hmm. that sunrise mm-hmm. it's, it's 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 powerful it's like mm-hmm. oh lord mm-hmm. another day mm-hmm. thank you yes. you know and you, that, that spontaneous praise yes. and yes. it just yes. comes yes. <laughs> amen. Just, i always amen. appreciated that amen but mm-hmm. yeah. well, look one year um uh my brother who lives in seattle washington all of us went down the sisters and brothers only my parents stayed here and so of course he's living in seattle and he takes us to Mount Rainier, Rainier, Rainier. Mm-hmm. one of the highest mm-hmm. mountains in the United States. Mm-hmm. Oh, honey, <laughs> when we got there, and it's the summertime, but you've got this humongous mountain with all of the snow on it, mm-hmm. and we were at the base of it. I broke out with how great thou art. I stood there, <laughs> we worshiped and sang because wow. it was awesome. awesome. Mm-hmm. Seeing that huge mountain with all of that snow, but the vastness of it. And so, yes, yes. with what each one of you said, and, and isn't that sweet how Jesus would just kind of be specific to what he mm-hmm. would let you, your eyes see, mm-hmm. glory, to minister to your heart, and so I love, and I like Pastor's word, I love the specificity. <laughs> yes. <that> the Lord <laughs> has, uh, to just be so detailed and specific and how he just wants to show us 
me and you. I, I just want you to, to know me, mm -hmm. to love me. I want you to see how personal I am with you mm -hmm. and what I want you to glean from me that's going to cause you to know me. Turn to page 64. In the video, Tony describes different types of relationships with God by comparing them to planets. He says some are cold, others are hot, and some are even hot or cold. What does it mean in practical, everyday life descriptions to reflect on the following types of relationships? When you and I think of in a practical way, what does it mean when, when we're cold? And we're just going to make it make it not just personal for what somebody mm -hmm. else is doing, but we, hey, this is about our relationship with the Lord. This is in the context of us and the Lord. Okay, we'll deal with community, Lord willing. Exactly. Next week. But when you're cold, <laughs> what does that mean personally and practically Man. for you when you're cold? Not connected. Okay. No yes. Not uh, focus. Huh. Mm -hmm. Not focus. Not yes. focus. Mm -hmm. yes. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Not what seeking else? him. Yep. Amen. Amen. Not praying. Distance. Yes. Exactly. Yep. Yeah. Right. Distance. You're cutting yeah. yourself off. Out of sync. Mm -hmm. Out of sync. Out of sync. Right. Yep. Sync. Yep. You're forfeiting all the benefits of connectivity. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. computers, you're but, you're uh, choosing yeah. to do that. Yeah. You yeah. just yeah. don't want to be bothered. Amen. Amen. Okay, it is a me, myself, and I. Like mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. That's where I is when I'm cold. Mm -hmm. Yep. What about the word? You don't mm. do the word. Not there. Not right. today. Not right yeah. now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's where we are. So, Sister Cheryl. Yeah. So, Sister Cheryl. So, um, like, um, we talk about you know cold and hot. And, you know, like you said, you, there's distance there. But what is it when you're, um, like, you're going through something, you know, and some changes like occurring, and it's affecting your mood, it's affecting, and you said on Wednesday, you said, um, see you on Saturday. That's what you said at the end of the Bible study on Wednesday. Mm -hmm. okay. I was so excited about today's ministry Okay. Because I was looking forward to it because mm -hmm. I'm in a place of, you know, where things are changing with my dad. Mm -hmm. And I like, I felt like I was so, I'm not alone because I talked to the Lord, but it was just, you know, that place where you just, um, you, you don't know how to label it, mm -hmm. but you, you know, you need more of him. You start reading your word, you start and you, you understand things where you used to, you know, you don't, you didn't understand certain passages of scripture and you read them today when you're going through this and it all unfolds to you, you know, it unfolds. And I, like you said, it may be just not only teaching me, but it, it may be building character. So I'm just grateful, you know, we're talking about the different seasons um, of where we are. Um, I'm grateful for a season where, no, you may not feel like you're close or hot or, but I'm grateful for that season when you know you need him, you know, um, I don't know what the, how to label it, but when you know you need him, <laughs> when you can't, you know, when you're yeah. going after him and you okay. don't, and, and your flesh, you know, that's not something you normally would do, you know, but you know that he has something for you. So you go, you know, you go where he told you to go. You know, you're trying to mm -hmm. stay, stay in that place of where you know he is. So I'm just great. Okay. Well, you, you kind of jumped ahead. <laughs> uh, <laughs> because I, we're being intentional with, with, the, with the specifics of the hot or cold. And then we're going to get to the hot or cold. Right. Okay. <laughs> you're at the hot or cold. Okay, <laughs> so being uh, understanding what it is to be cold and to realize we all there because we're in the sin cursed body and our feelings, our flesh supersedes what the spirit woman, right? The Holy exactly. Spirit 
and tens. And mm -hmm. so to answer the question of what does it mean? What does it look like when we are in that cold place? You know, all of us have, have just said. And so that's that's where we are. That's what we are, um, we're dealing with, that the coldness of our flesh is real. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Amen. You know, yes. It's just real. It, it's mm -hmm. where the flesh is. Don't want no word. Don't want no fellowship. Mm -hmm. Don't want <laughs> to do right. Don't want. Mm -hmm. that's, don't want. That's right. And so that, that's real. Mm -hmm. And I think even mm -hmm. now, with all that has encompassed our world, the challenge for us as believers with where we are it is to not be as real and understand the flesh is going to always be the flesh. That's Feelings right. are there. That's and right. so yeah. to understand that and to grasp that, but that's where the comma and the but mm -hmm. comes in <laughs> because we don't stay there. But no. the reality Amen. is when we that's a reality when we're yes. there. okay. Yeah. So we just dealt with what it looks like in practical everyday descriptions. When we're cold, we're cold. But when we're hot, yes, Lord. when the when the, the sweet fellowship has been intimate mm -hmm. and it's not even about your feelings, no, that's but right. It's about what the, the connection that you've had with him. What does that hotness, how, how is it exampled in your heart? Just briefly, I don't, you know, we, I mean, just like we did with the cold, what it looks like when you're hot, what, what do you do? What, what are you about when you're hot? Come on, some who haven't shared. You're drawn, oh, okay. Okay. I was Go just going to say you're drawn to worship the Lord. Okay. Sometimes, you know, if you're home, you know, you can get into one of those moods and you're more sensitive to it because it's just you there. I just pray to the Lord because I keep remembering James 4, 8, I think it is. Draw near to God who will draw near to you. And I feel that doldrums trying to set in. I just <clears throat> erupt in spontaneous praise. Or I'll call Amen. a friend or I'll text a friend and I'll just listen to some worship music and have my own little private worship service. <laughs> okay. And always lifts you out. You can't stay down when you're thinking about and meditating on on the word when you know you need to go there because something's just enveloping you and we're, we're human we all experience that but that's when we have to resist that and draw near to god intentionally and if you're in the workplace go off somewhere have a few moments of quiet time where you just start praising god just start enumerating all the reasons that you have in your spirit for being thankful okay. and i think so when, okay mm -hmm. okay so when okay so when you're hot when you're in that place, then you offer spontaneous praise. Anybody else? When you're hot, uh, when you're in that the, place. What, the, what does the, it be like for you? The hot sec. The hot could be a point of revelation. God okay. revealing unto you what He wants you to do. Mm -hmm. So it could be a point of revelation. Mm -hmm. Okay, great, excellent. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? Sister Nobel. I'm I'm moved to write. Oh, okay, um, great. Word, I get into the word and I want to dig deeper and deeper okay. and I discover something that pops out that I want to know more about. And I start writing about okay. that. That turns into a devotional. Amen. 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 All right, somebody else. That's what I want. Yeah. It's, well, it's encouraging. It's, it, it encourages you that mm -hmm. the decisions that you made and you may have you know, thought that they weren't the right decisions, but it's a, and you see, you read the word of God and is encouraging you to go forth because you are right. Cause the Lord is just confirmed that you're right okay. because things okay. start coming together. Okay. Amen. For the goodness of the Lord. Amen. 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 Okay. One well, more I like, person. I like to say, you know, like, uh, especially like when I was writing my plays and stuff mm -hmm. and I'll be writing. Yes, it's the <laughs> And here, Sister Lee. Lee. Frozen. She oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. Wow. Passion. Okay. Yeah. One other person. Anybody else? Paula? Passion. Passion. When you finish, yeah. you me? Oh, and when you finish, you know it wasn't you. Uh, you, you yeah. Know, okay. It's yes. all the glory to God because yes. uh, you know, right. and Amen. I also want to say I just um you know appreciate the honest of this because you know we do get cold. You know, and we get hot. And I just prayed the Lord like this morning, you know, like even with prayer. I mean, I forgot it wasn't September. <laughs> I 
on it so bad. You know what? And I'm sorry when we pray. It's just such a beautiful time. I just love that time when I hear the different saints praying. Yes. And yes. all I can do is just sit there and just cry while people are praying. My water just come all out of my eyes. I'll be like, Lord, this is just so good. Because this Amen. is what we're supposed to be about. Amen. 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 <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> And, um, and then we'll move to the hot and cold because we can be there. Oh. And I think even with what, um, who was it that was Lisa. talking? Lisa. She mm -hmm. pretty much answered that whole aspect of mm -hmm. the hot and cold. You know, that, that's where we're going to be, but we don't stay in the cold. And one thing about it, we can't stay up on the mountain either. And so that, that's the balance of the Christian walk. Yes, and, right. and so, look, one of, the, one of my things is I do what I call a right now praise. Mm -hmm. Okay, Lord, right now, I thank you. I feel good right now. I thank you that dust and dust and dust. I'm giving you a right now praise. Because in a half an hour, in a few minutes, I don't know what it's like. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I Learn to do. You right too. Now, That's why I said that. So, look. What are some of the consequences or benefits of living the Christian life in each of these categories? Okay, we're going to do the cold first. What are some of the consequences when we choose? Mm -hmm. Because remember, every decision is a decision of obedience. When we choose to stay in that cold place, what will be, just give me one, what would be a consequence? When this, we choose to stay in that cold place. This is Women, uh, Sarah? Backsliding. Backsliding. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Who else? Loss of blessings. Yes. Exactly. Yeah, well, that's what I was going to say. Miss out on God's blessings. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Anybody else? I got to you experience and achieve all God has for you. Right. Right. Okay. Hard and heart. Hard and heart. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. You. You're out of line. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Nothing's going to line up until you put yes. him first. Exactly. Mm -hmm. exactly. Amen. Amen. What about what about eternal rewards? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You missed out. You forfeit. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. And um, and and if 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 a person if we stay there, mm, let me make my call section sure because this this ain't this is not him. Yeah. So Amen. Me, Amen. Let me look back and to mm -hmm. check myself. Amen. Amen. You know, because everything is a will, yeah. you know, a, a, a choice of obedience or disobedience. Mm -hmm. And he says, you know, you mind? Oh, I'm a chasing you. That's how much I mm -hmm. love you. That's right. Mm -hmm. but, Lord. Um, so that's one of the consequences. Um, you know, of course, being cold. What is one of the benefits of being hot? Give me one benefit for you and I are, are, are in that place of, of being hot for Jesus. You feel You're able to encourage. Wait a minute, Holy wait a minute. Okay, who? Uh, Cheryl Tucker first. Uh, the, give me one benefit when you and I are hot for the Lord. During that period of time, you're filled with the power and authority of the Holy Spirit, and the joy of the Lord is resonating in your spirit. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Okay. okay, who else? You're drawn you're to worship. Which, uh, mm -hmm. who is that? Cynthia. Mm -hmm. okay. okay, you're drawn to worship. Okay. You want Lisa, to testify. You want to say? Lisa, you want to testify? I was mm -hmm. saying you're able to encourage. Yes. Amen. 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 That's a good one. Overflow. Yeah. Amen. Uh, Dr. Ruth, what were you going to say? Uh, testimony. Yes. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Your testimony is, is matured. Um, anybody else? Others reap blessings. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. From Yes. From being around yeah. you. Exactly. Um, op open doors of opportunity. Mm -hmm. When we're hot, we're more prone um, to step into that place, even, you know, mm -hmm. where we may not uh, be, you know, as assured, but yet by faith. Mm -hmm. Okay, Lord, I'm going to step into this opportunity. We mm -hmm. grow in the assurance of our faith. Is, it's growing. It's a time of growing. Yes, growing, exactly. Growing in our, in our faith. And also understanding, I'm, I'm fulfilling your purpose, Lord. Amen. Yes. That's why the unique me, that's why you need the unique me. Mm -hmm. And I'm fulfilling your purpose. What about you, Sandy? What, what is it like when you, you know, when you're hot for the Lord, what is one of the benefits that take place in your life? 
Well, when I'm filled, um, the Lord send you someone, you know, yeah. to encourage, you yeah. know, it's not me, myself and I, it's someone else that you can, yeah. you know, respond to. Exactly. And so you want to. Exciting, right. Yeah, I, you, you want to. Yes, yeah. I do. Yes. Praise God. Mm -hmm. Praise God. Number three. Well, even, I mean, the hot, the cold, that, that can be either or, you know, we know that there's consequences and there's benefits, but understanding each place, you know, is a choice of obedience. When I obey you, Lord, it's just the, the reaping because it's you working in me to work through me. And so I'm going to benefit um, for that. Number three, Tony Close, which is one of my favorite verses also. Jeremiah 29, 11, mm -hmm. in the video teaching, referring to it as a verse of hope in a very negative book. At the time of the writing, God's people had distanced themselves from God and would be mm. categorized as cold. Mm. So um, someone just read this again, and we're going to uh, move forward. Um, one, just read what's right uh, here, Jeremiah 29, 11 through 14. I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord, plans for welfare not for calamity, to give you a future and a hope. Then you will call upon me and come and pray to me, and I will listen to you. You will seek me and find me when you search for me with all your heart. I will be found by you, declares the Lord. I will restore your fortunes and will gather you from all the nations and from all the places where I have driven you, declares the Lord. I will bring you back to the place from where I sent you into exile. Okay. See, God had made a covenant with them uh, in Deuteronomy chapter 30. You know, you know, when you obey me, this is what's going to happen. But when you don't, I am going to be the one that's going to send you into captivity. That's how I'm going to chase in you because you have willingly disobeyed me. So what is the key to moving from a negative experience of life, pretty much what you were kind of referencing to Lisa, which we all go through. What is the key to moving from a negative experience of life and God toward a positive one of personal purpose and spiritual intimacy? What is the key? Surrender. Surrender. Anything else? Knowing the promises of God, knowing the promises of God, and that even whatever I go through, I know I can still seek him in the midst of going through. Okay. Mm -hmm. Amen. Walk in him. Amen. Anybody else? So oh, be with him with all your heart. Yes. Amen. Even mm -hmm. those, what, uh, what was right here in the verse, mm -hmm. if I, to move from where I am in this cold place, in this negative place, mm -hmm. to this positive place in him, then it's exactly what uh, some of you just said, but it's just exactly what's in the scripture. Mm -hmm. I must seek him. Yes. I mm -hmm. must search for him. Mm -hmm. I must call upon him. Mm -hmm. I must pray. So when I do those things, and of course the word obedient, when I am obedient to those things, and remember that middle word in obedience, when I'm willing to die to what I'm feeling, I'm dying to this negative impulse, this negative mindset, I'm dying, and I must seek, search, pray, then that's going to move me. Mm -hmm. Because it's nothing about feelings. Mm -hmm. Those feelings are going to be subject to yes. the authority of the Holy Spirit. Yes. Amen. So to that Trust. flesh, Trust. that the Holy Spirit is strengthening me. And now my negative is becoming positive because I'm seeking him. Mm -hmm. I'm searching for him. I'm wanting him. Mm -hmm. And he begins to override what I feel. And so <laughs> thank you. Yeah. It's you, the person. It's you, the intimacy. And, and though we we don't say we feel him, yet we know there's a, and I love what Pastor always said about when, uh, otherness. There's something about the otherness of, uh, of mm -hmm. his mind, of, of just 
what his word says, when I do what he says, yeah, it's, it, it is a mindset that, that changes. Yeah, so I, I can move from the negative to the positive. Number two, in your own words, describe what must be done in order for God to restore you and set you on the path to your purpose. Just one person, describe briefly what we must do when we're in that place. And th this whole section is dealing with us in fulfilling our purpose and in being intentional in what he's doing in us to do through us. So when I know I've been in that cold place, that negative place, I have allowed myself to get there. I can't blame my circumstances. I can't blame other people. I've, I've, I, I, will, I can blame them, but yet I've allowed all of this to take me in this negative place. What must I do to be restored back on the path to purpose? One person briefly. I have something. Lee? Uh, I was saying like when, um, like when church, um, I was sitting home watching, um, you know, all the time. And then it got to a point and I knew the Lord wanted me to come back. So when even watching um, church on television, I felt this loneliness. Mm -hmm. I felt so lonely and I knew that I had to get back. And that music that Paula, I love that Paula, the music that she plays. When mm -hmm. I hear that music, it's like make me want to cry because mm -hmm. I know I needed to be back in church. Mm -hmm. And once I got back in church, you know, the Lord just, you know, he just took care of everything, you know. Mm -hmm. I felt so lonely and so empty, even though I was at church, in church, in my house. But I was lonely in my house watching watching on television because the Lord wanted me there, not sitting here. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. And so, so the bottom line is whenever we've allowed ourselves to get in a place, you know, of coldness or negativity, we got to call it what God calls it. Mm -hmm. I sinned against yeah. you, Lord. Yeah. That's just the bottom line. I have chosen to sin against you in my heart. Mm -hmm. And so when I confess that sin, and I Amen. call it what it is. Amen. And then, yes, take those steps. Like you said, Lee, that's the step of obedience mm -hmm. out of that disobedience. And mm -hmm. then when I do, look what begins to happen. <clears throat> Can you think of a biblical example? And I just want you to give me their names. Can you think of a biblical example of someone who had grown distant from God, but repented, sought him, and was sat? on a path to purpose. Okay, everybody got one. Everybody. Okay. Okay, let me call David. you. Can you raise your hand? Can I see? I don't know how you do that hand. Okay. Sister Paula, what was one you said? David. David. Okay. Uh who else? Dr. Ruth? Mm -hmm. I was gonna say David. Oh, you were gonna say David too. Okay. Who else? Mm -hmm. David Nebuchadnezzar. Nebuchadnezzar. Okay, yeah. who else had one? Mo Solomon. Who? Solomon. Okay, who else had one? Moses. 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 Okay. Peter. Naomi. Peter. Peter. Okay. Naomi. Naomi. Yeah, okay. Naomi. Okay, good. Sister Sarah. Elijah. I would say Peter. Okay, very uh, good. Yes, yeah. Peter. Anybody else? His name starts with a J. And he ran from God. And God Jacob. Jonah. 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 Yes. Jonah. Yeah. Jonah. Oh, yeah. 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 What, what about the prophet? Yes. 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 Oh, yes. 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 Paul. That's a real good one. Can anybody say mm -hmm. Paul? I said Paul. Okay. I said Paul. They mm -hmm. say Samson. <laughs> yeah. Or well, they say the Barnabas. Mm -hmm. Okay. okay. Well, I, but I guess, in, in the sense of Paul, I'm thinking of someone who had already been in Christ. Paul got knocked off, and once he, yes. you know, the only, yes. yeah, but once he was connected to the Lord, it mm -hmm. was challenge after challenge after mm -hmm. that. And then, mm -hmm. you know, but he was the only one. <laughs> but at the end, I um, count these things as yes, small yes. things. The sufferings of Christ, yes. you know, that they, so, doesn't compare, yes. right, to the glory. Yes. Yes. How about the Adam glory and Eve? Because in my weakness, his strength is perfected. So yeah. I'm counting all yeah. my needs, all of the trials I've been through. Right. Oh, my goodness, y'all. Mm -hmm. Long way to go. 
Mm -hmm. How about Adam and Eve? Yeah, but I, I guess I'm thinking some, well, yeah, once mm -hmm. they knew that they weren't right. That they did wrong. Acknowledging. Okay. Stop. Okay, so in what ways should this story encourage us to keep our eyes on the present <laughs> and not on the past? Mm -hmm. In what ways can failures or mistakes in our past keep us? Well, wait a minute. Let me just answer the first one yes. first. Um, in what ways should time it? Okay. In yes. what ways? Just give me one way that um, this story could encourage us to keep our eyes on the present and not on the past. Yes. Mm -hmm. One person. Just give me. Um, what does this story do to, to you? to encourage you to keep your eyes on the present and not on the past. I wrote, although David sinned greatly, God, God forgave him when he sought him with all his heart. This story is encouraging because you see God's power, <clears throat> power to forgive and restore and, mm -hmm. and to use the repentant heart. Mm -hmm. um, David yes. sinned greatly but he confessed and God greatly used him. Failures of our past can keep us in bondage with guilt, shame, yeah. but we must always remember God's forgiveness mm -hmm. and it, that God's forgiveness is full and complete. When we don't accept God's full and complete forgiveness, we allow Satan to keep us in bondage. <clears throat> Never... Uh, Wait a minute. Um, minimizing our spiritual purpose in in the present and the future. Isn't that excellent? That's and nice. That, mm -hmm. and, that, and he's an excellent ex example of one that God knew when he created him, what yes. he was going to do. But right. God labeled him right. a man after my heart. Right. Mm -hmm. and, right. and so that, mm -hmm. that's what we want. God labeled us. us. Yes. After yeah. your heart. Right. Right. Yeah. And see, that's mm -hmm. God's testimony about David. That wasn't David's testimony so much as <laughs> about to right. God. But God said, huh, he's a man after my heart. Mm -hmm. And we may not hear it, sisters, but God can say, oh, she's a woman after my heart. Mm -hmm. Because no matter where she's been or what she's done, she's still seeking me after Amen. all these years. Mm -hmm. She's Amen. still Amen. allowing me mm -hmm. to use her after all these years. Mm -hmm. and no matter what... She Somebody else has said or done, or even what she has thought that she yes. wasn't worthy of, she's yes. still here. Yes. Amen. And, I, and I, she's allowing me to get, still use her for my yes. glory. And, and Sister Cheryl, yeah. and for those of us who are in Christ, it was covered under the blood. All the blood. So, and what, mm -hmm. um, give me one, well, let me see, in what ways can failures or mistakes in our past keep her from maximizing? Um, well, she's pretty she's, much she's, what Sister Cheryl has already said. She did. Yeah, she did. yeah. Mm -hmm. you just you, uh, eloquently it. said it through sure um, King David. And because we're still a work in progress. Mm -hmm. Praise you Praise know, Romans 8 29 and of course yeah. Ephesians 2 10. Mm -hmm. And so just the fact that he is still working on me. Mm -hmm. I'm oh, still yes. here. Mm -hmm. yeah. Hallelujah. For me, mm -hmm. Yes. Start to page 66 as we come to the end. In the video lesson, Tony says, if you want to know the plan for your life. Don't go looking for the plan. Look for the planner. Planner. Yes. <laughs> to look for the planner. What could you, with just what we've said in the light of this study, what would, uh, um, how would you just summarize briefly? What does it mean? No, just personalize it. What, what does it mean for you to look for the planner? And not so much his plan. Someone who hasn't shared. Tony, are you there? Steph? Elise? Because your plans yeah. can change. Oh, I'm oh, sorry, okay. go ahead. Okay, thank, who, who was that? That's Nessie. 
Nessie, okay. What did I'm you sorry. say, Nessie? So why what I don't look for the plan mean? never because your plans can change. Okay. When you say you're gonna do one thing, something else can come along and mess it up. So mm -hmm. I always yeah. focus on my God because I know he has, you know what he has for me, yeah. it's for me. Yeah. And you okay. know, he's he plans my life and I need to orchestrate it. And I just focus on the scriptures. Oh God, you are my God. Early will I see you. Early will I see you. Amen. I Amen. Long for you in a dry and thirsty land Amen. where Amen. there is no water. I look for you in the sanctuary and see your power and your glory. <laughs> and he Amen. just keeps me. He says, my keeper. Oh, yes. oh Jesus, God. thank you. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I'm a yeah. nothing. I'm a <laughs> planner. Yes, yes the planner. The planner. Oh, planner. Okay. Amen. Jesus. Amen. Somebody else, what, what does it mean to look for the planner for you, for you? What does it mean? Sister Cheryl, I remember yes. being, I remember being at a car shop one day and I was talking to this police woman who had this border collie. It's a little black and white dog. And I'm telling you, every time she would move one step to the left or right, that little dog, his eyes were like bright and he just kept looking at her waiting expectantly. And that's what, you know, that's what I would like to be like, like looking, mm -hmm. listening, having been so close to my master mm -hmm. that when he speaks, mm -hmm. you know, that Amen. I can hear him. Right Amen. on. Amen. Amen. Good. Amen. I know it's his voice. Praise Amen. the Lord. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. Anybody else? <laughs> I think for me, um, Micah, um, Seven, seven comes to mind. Therefore, I will look to the Lord. I will wait for the God of my salvation because my God, he's going to hear me and um, just dwelling on him. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Anybody else? Novella had the Baptist finger raised. <laughs> <laughs> This is novella. <laughs> came to my mind, and it is that in the heart of man, he plans his way. Yeah. But the Lord orders his steps. Amen. 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 That's the first He is That's preeminent. Good. He is first, and he has his authority. Yes. Amen. 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 Praise God. He's omniscient. God. He knows everything, A to Z. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Right, Psalms 37 4, delight yourself in the Lord. He will give you desires of your heart. Okay. Because right. when you delight yourself in Him, His desires become your desires. Yes. 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 Amen. So you got to know the planner. You got to delight, seek, thirst yes. after Him. And, and you will, your spirit, the mm -hmm. spirit woman will hear what you're saying, Daddy. Yes, mm -hmm. Daddy. Amen. Okay. Amen. 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 I find that his plan um, unfolds in my life, you know, like sometimes you want to know the plan, but as I just trust in him and as I just walk with him, mm -hmm. his plan just begins to unfold and then I can give him glory. It doesn't happen when I so much want it to happen. Mm -hmm. um, I find that with me a lot that it, it's, I have to concentrate on him and walk with him because eventually he will start showing things, his plan unfolding in my life. Mm -hmm. Not on my mm -hmm. time. Yes. Right. On his time. Yes. <laughs> amen. Yes. Amen. Yes. amen. Yes, indeed. Mm -hmm. Yes. Amen. And sometimes I, for me, it, it's that intimacy with God that I'm seeking. So you can't have an intimacy with a plan, but you can have no. intimacy with a person. Amen. And so that, amen. that, that, that seeking after him, you know, that, that I, I want to do and do more of, mm -hmm. it's, you know, I'm not so most focused on what he can give me, but more focused on just knowing him, if yeah. that makes sense. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. Ha having, having just a, a, a sweet time. <coughs> wow, it's nothing like having a, a sweet time with you and Jesus. Mm -hmm. Amen. You know, Amen. because he, he already uh, uh, still, like I said, one, Psalm 139, too, just continues. Oh, yeah. yeah. He already know, yeah. know my thoughts. Before yeah. I thank him, right. and mm -hmm. and his thoughts toward me are more than the sands. You know what I mean? Brains the sands, <laughs> and, yeah. and, and yeah. yet the billions of people he's made, and his thoughts more than yeah. that. Mm -hmm. Woo. 
That, that's yes. why I, I always say that's why uh, we gotta have a new body, yeah. a handle, <laughs> the glory, and it's, we got you. Yeah. And yet, that's what eternity. Why eternity will have to be eternity? Yeah. Because we'll never cease knowing Him. Right. So it, it's just awesome. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. Yeah. It's just yeah. awesome and understanding, or just grasping. And I say a lot. You know, we've only touched one of the fringes of his garment, mm. you know, because he's so inexhaustible, you know, Amen. unfathomable. And, mm. and yet that's why eternity has got to be eternity. And, and two, that's why, sisters, our hearts, as we move from this portion about us and our God. Mm. And so I want you for November to read pages 203 to 220 in the book when we, we, are, we are dealing with community others and then I want you to do the questions from page 66 to page um, 70 in the workbook because we'll be completing this study but the fact that you know getting getting it right where we are that's where it starts. And as the Lord starts with you and I and understanding his purpose for still having us here, then our purpose also for community, not just, you know, for yes, the body of Christ, but even having a heart intent in, in making him known. It's not just knowing him for ourselves, but to make him known you know, yeah, to others, right. because the world is crying out, you know, they need to know Jesus as Savior. And so Amen. we need to be just as intentional in our growing and our sweet fellowship with him. But there's no way with what he's going to be doing in us that we look that passion mm -hmm. that we're knowing from him. There's no way it's going to be confined mm -hmm. to our hearts and we're not going to want to tell somebody else. Excuse me one moment. Okay. Can you excuse me one moment? Mm -hmm. <laughs> the assignment, right? Pages <laughs> 203 to 220 yes, book. And then right. in the workbook, do pages 66 to 60 to 70. Right. Mm -hmm. Yes. 203 yes. to 220. 220. 220. Mm -hmm. While we waiting, y'all bring some bags. I got some green tomatoes and tomatoes tomorrow we're bringing out. Y'all can take them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you. Amen. Okay. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. 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 <laughs> you guys, we were sharing verses of scripture that encourages us when we're in our low. I have one. Um, it's Psalm 27, 14. I didn't hear it if someone shared it. Pardon me, but it was um I would have fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. That verse right there that brings me to myself, you know, to to where I should be, where I should my expectation should be should come from, get me back into the right perspective. Amen. 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 Thank you. Twenty. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. I had to do the grandma thing. Uh -huh. Okay. So Miss Sinai is going over her cousins and they're going to have a ball. But guess what, my sisters? Man. And I don't remember the exact date. But as of today, this month, I'm in my jubilee in Christ. I'll celebrate 50 years in knowing wow. Jesus. Hey. 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 Amen. No matter what, no matter what, no matter what the journey, Amen. what the assignment, wow. he knows the purpose, right? And he knows yeah. the plan. You know, and he wants us to fight a good fight. He's done. Uh, what he has chosen to do by giving us eternal life, the victory Amen. has already been won. We just have to walk in light Amen. of knowing him and making him known. Amen. Amen. So just to, you know, I, I said, wow, Lord, you know, I, I just, it's unbelievable that 50 years has passed. Mm -hmm. 
Wow. So fast. Ah. Mm. Ah. But I remember the night standing in Mount of Bible Baptist Church mm. oh, yes. after, after, you know, being challenged with the word from my sister, who was challenged, of course, from the word from this homosexual Jew who told her about Jesus. Oh. And she told me. And I remember going home. I, I didn't understand it. And it was getting my red. I just got my new red Mustang. <laughs> and my bush wig, honey. And my hot pants. Mm -hmm. just riding down the road in my new Mustang and I'm turning the dial and I heard this preacher mm -hmm. and I said hmm that and I told my sister they were having revival let's go over to that church mm -hmm. and went over to Manor Bible Baptist Church and Dr. William Banks from Philadelphia Pennsylvania mm -hmm. was preaching wow. that night and I can't tell you the message but all I know is at the, the end of his message when he Amen. gave the gospel Faithful. of salvation that night, I stood there and I remember mm -hmm. when the spirit of God came in, there was an mm -hmm. other that came in. And from that point on, because in those days when mm -hmm. you would accept Christ, they would take you in the back to just make sure mm -hmm. that everything was right. clear. And mm -hmm. then they would bring you out in front yes. of the church mm -hmm. and they would, you know, just kind of mm -hmm. ask you, you know, what happened? Well, mm -hmm. honey, when uh, I think it was Milton, when uh, Deacon Milton gave me the mic and I started talking. I've been talking ever since. <laughs> <laughs> every since. Amen. Amen. So just to encourage you, I don't know how long your journey has Amen. been. Right. But it's been worth it. Mm. It's continually going to be worth it. Amen. And all I know is we're looking for his soon okay. return. But until Amen. then, we're going to be busy about our father's business. Business, yeah. He has us in the right now. Amen. What I want to do before we get off, I want to, and I, and I have to just say a, a thank you to Paula, you know, for, for doing, uh, for just being where you are with, you know, with the ministry and everything. But also, you know, doing my videos and just uh, allowing, you know, God's uniqueness with you to allow my music, you know, to be played with the background. Amen. And so let's Amen. just look at Amen. the diversity of all of us. All of us. Yes. Yes. All of us. All of us. All of us in the body. So what I want to do is I want to just take a few um, prayer requests, but I definitely want to play for you, Cheryl, before we leave today. Because you're going to be having... Uh, the surgery, is that right, Cheryl Tucker? Yes, but I, I it's, it hasn't been set up yet. Okay, that's all right. Yeah. So we just, now that you know that that's, um, you know, been acknowledged that you will be having, and it, what is it, open heart surgery? Yes, oh, they okay. have to fix the valve. Okay. Okay, are there any other specific requests that we could um, just pray for before we get off today? I broke my middle finger. Oh, oh no. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, it's just a tip. It's just a tip. Uh, I was cleaning vigorously, and I jammed it, mm -hmm. and it just sat back, and it won't go, it won't straighten up. So keep in prayer that it will heal naturally right. on its own. I will be able mm -hmm. to still send out all my emails. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Aww. Okay. I saw that face. I saw that face, Ness. Yeah, we saw it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that, oh, okay, that was the wrong finger, but anyway. <laughs> yes, it's a shame. Um, yes, anybody else? Prayers, a yeah, prayer for the people, for the families in Florida. Oh, yeah. Yes. 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 yes, yes, my the daughter, um, the line. they don't have any power right now, oh. you know. Okay. Yes. When did that yeah. affect your house? No, no, thank God. Okay. Praise, yeah. God. Praise God. Oh. Amen. Mm. Anyone Maybe you can also keep the yeah, keep the people in uh Nova Scotia, Newfoundland, and all those. I have some cousins who live in um there where the hurricane Fiona destroyed that too. So just keep really? them in prayer for okay. yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, what sister Sarah? Oh, pray for my family. We just got a call that we need to go see my niece, my nephew, I'm sorry. Uh, at the hospital now, so. Mm -hmm. Okay, what's his name? Uh, Nathaniel Birds. Anyone else? 
Yeah, I'm, I want to uh, still keep my son Dwight Palmer in salvation because I love the relationship he had with his children, but he doesn't need to be saved. Okay. That, that's really for my, all, all of our unsaved loved ones. Yeah, mm -hmm. and my neighbor, my neighbor up the street, her son uh, just uh, got, he got hit by a car and he passed away. Mm -hmm. Is Michael the Bennett's, the Bennett, the Bennett family, pay for the Bennett okay. family. Yes. I ask for prayer starting Monday. What you say, Cheryl? New Good News Club starting oh, okay. Monday at Fall Staff. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Lisa, what were you going to say? I asked for prayer for my dad. He told okay. me this week that he could not stand. Mm -hmm. um, and it's apparent he can't do it anymore. So, just right. Okay. Healing Rice. Yeah. Can we please pray for our school system and the um the staff and the kids in the school? Yeah. Yes. So much violence and so much going on in our school system. Yeah, absolutely. The safety of uh, the, these children in these school systems. I know. Yes. Yes, Lord. Um. Okay. Church attendance. Oh yes. Building. Oh yeah, the new building. Education and family center. Elise. Yes. Did you did you get those requests? I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. What? Did you did you get those request prayer requests? Oh yes, I did. Okay. Can you um um close yeah. us out in prayer? Certainly. Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay. Oh Lord, my God, I come before your throne of grace. I'm so thankful, dear God, for this fellowship of women. Mm -hmm and for the things that you uncovered as we uh, opened up your word. Thank you so much for all the things that you revealed to us, your glory as we see it in nature. And Lord, we have seen some things that were not so great, oh God, but we know it's all within your plan. Um, but before I continue on, I ask that you forgive me, dear God, and um, of my sin and word, thought, or deed, dear Father. As I look, about um, at your word, I see how good you've been to us. I, as I look back at the word that we had on Sunday, Lord, how we are not a thankful people. Mm -hmm. And sometimes, oh Lord, it just makes us, oh, it makes my heart just weep of how good you've been to us and we don't say thank you. So I'm saying thank you, dear God, for all that you do for your grace, your mercy, your loving kindness, is better than life. And Father God, we come this afternoon with so many requests, there are so many things that are on our hearts right now. First of all, dear God, I pray for those who are in Florida, as um, the sister has said that her daughter is there. Um, there are also other people suffering, oh God. They have lost everything, yes. but thank you, oh God, that they have not lost their lives. And some of them, oh God, they're, they're your people. They're your people. And you would say, you, you have said over and over that you would not see the righteous begging for bread. And Father, I pray that you would meet the needs of those who are in Florida, who have, who have undergone such a devastation, but maybe not a loss of life. Even those, Lord, that you would meet needs who have lost loved ones. I think there are about 30 people who have passed. I pray that you would meet their needs and that you would show yourself strong, even in this uh, devastating situation. Father, I also lift up to you, um, our sister Cheryl, who is having open heart surgery um, to uh, re fix a valve or replace a valve. We don't know the date or time, but we know, dear God, that you have her all in your hand. You have her, Lord. We thank you for how you've preserved her throughout all these different uh, tests that she's undergone, all the things she's had to do. We thank you for providing a living example of our mm -hmm. sister Cheryl Terrain, oh God, who has gone through many of the, the illnesses that our sister Cheryl is going through now. We thank mm -hmm. you for how you've preserved her 50 mm -hmm. years, mm -hmm. 50 years of knowing you and loving you, Lord, and serving you. And how her testimony, not only a testimony um, to, to Cheryl, 
but a testimony to all of us, oh God, in your keeping power and what you can do with one life that is yielded to you. Thank you so much for that. I pray, dear God, for the Good News Club that is starting up on Monday as boys and girls will get the gospel. I thank you for that. Thank you for providing that opportunity at Falstaff. Lord, we know in some of these schools, there are so many different things going on, so many different devices of the enemy. Yes, God. Oh, God, I pray that you protect these young ones. Yes, God. Yes. Their hearts are so young yes. and their hearts are open to the gospel. But there's an enemy, oh, God, that seeks to destroy everything that you're trying to do in their lives. I pray for those Christians who work in the school system, dear God, that you would help them to be on alert to these different devices and that when they see the enemy rising up, oh God, that they would remember to pray, that they would remember to stand in the gap for these young lives. I thank you so much, oh God, for what you're going to do in that situation. Oh, we love you, Lord. We know that you're gonna send those workers who have those boots on the ground for these children. Mm -hmm. Oh, Father, I pray for our church attendance. You have mm -hmm. given us a beautiful building. Mm -hmm. You have given us so many different things. A pastor who loves your word, who loves your people, dear God, who has a heart for your people. But yet, oh God, some of us have become complacent and will not come to church. And I pray, dear God, whatever, whatever the issues are, whether or not it's fear of, of disease, of contracting disease, or whether or not it's the comfortableness, oh God, that they have become complacent, that they would rather stay in their comfortable homes instead of coming out. I pray, oh God, that as Sunday comes, that they will be glad, that they will rise up mm -hmm. and be glad to come into the house of the Lord, that they would just get up no matter what and want to praise you in the house of the Lord where there are other saints of like-mindedness who can praise you too. Lord, I thank you for providing for us, dear God. You have given so many of us the gospel within our fingertips, in our mouths, on our lips, but we have family members who don't know you, dear God. Yes, God. And I pray, I pray, oh God, even the Bennett Ooh. family, the son hit by a car, mm -hmm. uh, even uh, Lee's son who has has children and you have blessed him over the years with having work to be able to take care of his children. Mm. Lord, many of us in our families, oh Father, that don't know you, I pray yes, that you God. would use the circumstances of life yes, to God. bring them to you, oh God. You are a God who sees all, knows all, yes, and can do all. Yes, and I'm praying, dear God, the circumstances of life that they would, it would turn them around, dear God, yes, God. Yes. and let them know that there's a God in heaven that they must give an account to and that they would repent and come to know the Savior. Yes, Thank you so much, oh God, for Sister Paula and all she has meant to our fellowship, dear mm. God. I yes, thank God. you, Lord, for her. I thank you for her spirit, dear God. Yes, God. But now yes. she has broken a finger. Yeah, God. And I pray, dear God, that that finger would heal Yes, so God. that she can continue to be the sister that she has, be, has been in our fellowship. Thank you, Lord. I thank you for so thank much God. that you have done through her and that you will continue to do through her. I thank yes. you for her ministry to her family, dear God. All yes, of us Lord. come from families and all we want, dear God, is the best for them. Continue to use each one of us, dear God, each one of us in our families. Help us to be the women that you called us to be. Help us to be valuable to our body, oh God, the church body you have placed us in. Yes, oh, God. Father God, we all have different gifts. Help us in our giftedness, oh God, to express ourselves with what you have given us. You are just such a loving God. And we yes, just Lord, thank God. you, Lord. We just yes, so God. thank you. I praise you, dear God. Thank you. God, there's none like you. You are unique, yes, oh God. Heavenly Father. Bless you are you. unique in, in how you express yourself in creation how you express yourself in each one of us yes, oh, what in our giftedness. And we thank you. We yes, praise God. you in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, just remembering a couple of other things. I pray for Nathaniel Bird, Deborah's um, nephew, and I just pray for whatever the circumstances are health-wise, that you would give the doctors wisdom, Lord God. Mm, yes, Lord. That if he does not know you, that even this would be the circumstance that would bend his heart 
to yes, be broken, Lord. to cry out for salvation. Yes. I pray that you would give the family wisdom, Lord God, and the care and the support that they are going to require. Yes. And I lift up Lisa's dad, Lord. I, I mm -hmm. know what it is to take care of, of, of your parent. And so, Father, I thank you for her being assigned the blessed position of taking care of her dad. Mm -hmm. Thank you for the resources that you've provided. But more than anything, for the, the strength of heart, because it's, it's worthy to be a caregiver. Yes. And so, Lord, may you grace her with just a fresh renewal of grace as her dad continues to deteriorate because the outward man is perishing. But thank you that he knows you, Jesus. Thank you for his faithfulness when he could come to church. He will allow them to roll him in there, Lord. So thank you for what he's already displayed as a one who knows you. So give her the strength and the wisdom, her and Clayton, Lord to be able to bear up under this weight and for whatever help they need, may you allow the services to render to them what is going to enable them to continue to be faithful with her dad. So again, Lord, we just conclude this time and just thank you for just allowing us to be in your presence, just allowing us to sit at your feet, just allowing us as John to lay our head on your breast through the knowledge of your word. So we praise you and we ask that as your kingdom women, as we leave this um, Zoom fellowship, Lord, that our hearts will continue to burn and thirst for you, that we might not only know you, but be willing whatever venue you would open today or tomorrow, that we would make you known. Bless the word as it comes forth tomorrow through your yes. manservant. Yes. And we thank you for all that you're going to do to bring about your glory. Mm -hmm. We're looking for you to come, Jesus. Even so come. But mm -hmm. until then, may we be steadfast, mm -hmm. unmovable, always abounding mm -hmm. in the work of the Lord because our labor is it's not, not in, in vain. vain. Thank you, Jesus. The Lord. Amen and amen. Praise him, my sisters. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Yes, sir. I can't yes, imagine you. I cannot imagine you in no hot pants. Oh my God, not your, my, not my. <laughs> That's our wise girl. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh, 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 Search the hot pants. <laughs> and, and look, I was crazy enough and had. had uh, I would go to work in them. I was oh. one of the first ones on my job. <laughs> oh my, oh my so look, goodness! <laughs> how crazy! I, I would leave with one thing on and change when I would get home so my husband wouldn't see. What oh, I my Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> this is the show is always stylish. Stylish. Girl, yeah, always stylish. I love when he said, skirts hanging down. Yeah. <laughs> and, this is sure. And, yes. and look, before, mm -hmm. holy girl, I put the long sleeves on. Oh, my and goodness. Turn all the way down to my ankle. And then as I grew in Christ, she added fabric to her skirt. Praise God. Deliverance. Thank you. Yes, yes. This is and if if I say you do not Amazing. come, I will see your beautiful faces in the morning. Okay. Amen. 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 Pray for our children tomorrow. Tomorrow is children's prayer day. Bring those yes. children out. Yes. Yes. Oh yeah. Yes. Amen. Yes. Yep. Okay. Good night, Sister Cheryl. Huh? Sister Wendy wanted to tell you something. Yes, Sister Cheryl. I still have that album. If you all, um, when you all were on the choir at Minor, that big yes. Afro. Remember that album? Yes. I still have that. Oh my goodness! <laughs> wow. Yes, God, girl. Yes, Love you guys. All right. Love y'all. Bye. 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 Bye.